Vegans are vegans. Never mind. No, they take the chocolate. And they're three for one. Can I get two of the mini chocolate? You oh. pay you. Um, wait, you go ahead. Oh, um, I'm just going to have to see the What are you raising money for? We're raising money for the Panther Supreme Dance Team. You know, our t shirts, our sweatshirts. We're going to look fly. They're going to really help us. So come on support. Woo! How much do you want to pay? 33 cents point. 33 cents Okay. And we're awesome, so. And how you yeah, join Dance Team! And how are you doing so far? Oh, pretty good. Really good. We like had to restock a few times. Who's so. buying more sweets, the teachers or the students? The students, because there's more students, but like the teachers like do buy a lot. Welcome back to another edition of the E! News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. Recently, on a warm early autumn Sunday afternoon, there was a wedding reception on top of our Pearl Street building here in downtown Brooklyn. The happy couple are BFS alumni lifers, Becky and Charles, from the class of 99. They met in first grade, and celebrating with them are 20 fellow alums. Congratulations! On today's show, we will hear from Camilla Church Green from the class of 1960. We will also go inside an IB math classroom, and we will be debuting our new Student Voices segment, not to be missed. But first, our upcoming announcements with 6C. This Sunday, October 5th, all BFS families are invited to meaningful worship with Brooklyn Monthly Meeting, starting at 11 a.m. at the Skimmerhorn Street Meeting House. On Monday, October 16th, there will be an 8th grade parent reception hosted by Head of School, Dr. Larry Weiss. 12th grade families have a FOSFA workshop on Wednesday, October 18th at 6.30 p.m. and a CSS profile workshop on Monday, October 23rd at 6.30 p.m. All parents, parents, and guardians are invited to the affordability workshop on Thursday, October 19th at 8.30 a.m. or 6 p.m. Get important information about scholarships, financial aid loans, and other ways to pay for independent school and college tuition. The preschool looks forward to welcoming parents to curriculum night on Friday, October 20th at 6 p.m. And everyone is invited to Family Fun Day in Prospect Park on Saturday, October 21st from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. There were 25 of us and 15 of us started in kindergarten together. I knew the teachers fairly well. We would meet them from, at museums on the weekends, go to their homes. And I was the first African-American graduate because there were other African-Americans probably ahead of me, but they didn't last. The humanistic aspect of the Quaker school was very important. And in looking back on it, I knew I was a human being before I knew I was an African-American. There was a philosophy that everyone had a spirit within them and that everyone's spirit was valid. The hurtful thing, the pain for me, the only person of color was the uh, custodian. And he was so proud that I was there and I could not acknowledge him. I became an English teacher because of uh, Ms. Fazek and this person who, um, and Ms. Fazek was from Swanee, Tennessee, with a southern accent, but um, we really got together around um, literature. My whole entire teaching career of 30 years was patterned on my experience at Brooklyn Friends. I love going to meetings. I love silence. And my classrooms were places where kids came to be silent, and they understood the meaning of silence. You don't always have to fill the air. Mathematics has beauty and romance. It's not a boring place to be, the mathematical world. It's an extraordinary place. It's worth spending time there. Marcus Dusotor. Right, good. And if the first derivative is negative, it tells me what about the object? Left the south. Right? Welcome to Zenzeli's 12th grade IB mathematics SL class. 
All IB, or international baccalaureate courses, have three important characteristics. Firstly, a focus on critical thinking instead of memorization. Secondly, an appreciation for the development of the whole student. And thirdly, a challenging and multifaceted assessment program. Let's listen in. Polynomial. Say that. It's a what? Third degree. It's a third degree polynomial. What you were paying attention to, so your answer isn't off the wall, what were you paying attention to? There's two. Right? So there's a two here, but you have to look at the highest power. And so I know it's a third degree polynomial, right? But what does that look like? You could plug it into your graphing calculator, you could see. On the IB exam, this would be a graph, this would be a calculator question. This would be in paper two. So the first derivative test requires me to take what derivative? The first. You are so smart. How did you know that? It requires me to take the first derivative. Zansley, while they're working on those equations, can I um, ask you, what, the, what is this class you're teaching? Uh, this is the second year of IB standard level math. What kind of math do you do in this course? What don't we do in this course? Uh, so we do some algebra, two concepts. Um, functions, we do some statistics and probability, logarithms, and then we do vectors and we end the course with uh, calculus. And they also write a math paper, which is called the exploration, on a topic of their choosing, which is part of their um, math IB grade. Do you enjoy teaching this class? I love teaching this class. When I first came to this school, I had never taught IB. I taught AP calculus. I really enjoyed teaching the class. And many of these students I've taught since 10th grade. Do you want to ask them some questions about the class? Sure. First of all, what has been your experience in the math program since you've been here? I mean, like, for me, math really sucked. Like, I was really bad in math in ninth grade, but I feel like it's because I didn't really try hard. But um, starting in 10th grade, I feel like that's when the math curriculum for me started making more sense. For those of you who took MCEs in the 10th grade or you had your MCEs last year, those are mathematical comprehensive exams that we create. How do you think that um, prepared you for your senior year? I guess like just the experience of studying for the MCEs was like helpful because for the most part you had to usually uh, work with uh, your classmates to figure out problems instead of like going to Zenzi and Otto for every like and asking them like to figure out things for you so you would like really be like on your own and like asking for help with from other students and that's kind of like how it's going to be probably uh, when we have to take our IB exam. Okay now see I have I have the pro in my head but I can't it's going to sound like I'm lying but I really can't think of a con you know. <laughs> A pro is that this is like a really like nice and safe environment where like I don't have to like feel bad or like second guess like me wanting to ask a question and I also think that like Zensley does a really good job at like making the class fun and like making like giving us seamless transitions between like you know some random story she wants to tell us and then like integrating that back into the work and sort of making it feel like it's not just a classroom but like a place where we can like learn and grow together. I'm the most concerned about in my island right now is my culture. Um, you know, PR isn't necessarily the wealthiest island in the world. Uh, so that's, that was already coming into play before Hurricane Maria happened, before Irma happened, everything. I mean, like, they were really, really struggling. I go there every year. Um, usually, like, twice a year I go see my family, you know, we go all over the island because it's like one of my favorite places to be. The moment that I saw for the first time on TV what my island looked like, I was like, it's never gonna be the same. That definitely broke my heart because my I'm 100% Puerto Rican. My mom's side of them, my dad's side, they're all they're all there, um, and it's just destroyed. It's it's really hard, especially to see people that aren't really all that wealthy to see them struggling. Trump's response to this is really, really killing me. And I wish that I could say that it was unexpected, but it's not. Because of that response, a lot of people are jumping in when they wouldn't. I, I am really concerned about my culture and like my people, because I don't want like what happened in New Orleans to happen and like people left, didn't get to go back. They're still like waiting for their homes. I'm like really, that's one of the things I'm really um, afraid of. 
And I mean, my, my culture is, is beautiful. <laughs> my people are just, we're amazing. For spring break, I was like, I don't want to sit at home and do nothing for a week like I normally do and then go to PR the next week. I want to go down there. I want to do relief work. Uh, even with my broken Spanish skills, <laughs> I'm really dedicating as much of myself as I can to restoring my island because I know that I'm just one person, but at the end of the day, like, I know that what I'm doing matters and I know that what I'm doing is going to help somebody. So, yeah. Well, that just about wraps it up for this edition of E! News Podcast. I'd like to thank everyone who made this production possible. And a special shout out to Paul Romano for his report on the IB Mathematics. Thank you so much, everybody. And remember to let your life speak.